everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Wisdom. So for today, we are going to be looking at femoral acetabular impingement of the hip. So hip impingement syndrome, which is more commonly known as. This is a motion disorder related to clinical abnormality or disorder of the acetabulum, so the cuff of the hip and the proximal femur. So I'm sorry, move my hair back. <laughs> so where the femur attaches up into the hip joint. So the hip is a ball and socket joint. It is very mobile. It allows us full range of mobility as well as stability. It relies heavily on the acetabulum as it comes down of the hip, articular cartilage and the fibrocartilage labrum, which is a cup inside the acetabulum. So it's a ring inside here that deepens the joint and adds stability. What can happen though is there can be dysfunction of the congruency between the two surfaces and dysfunction in the labrum. So the most common types of impingement is either cam or pincer. So there's two different types, but what we normally find is that with 85% is normally kind of mixed between the two. So it's kind of a mix of cam and pincer. Cam, unusually more commonly in men, is when we get flattening or changes to the femoral head as it comes in. Pincer is when we get deepening of the acetabulum, so bony formation for causing it to deepen leading to loss of range of motion and pain. What happens with impingement is we get damage to the articular cartilage of the articular surfaces, so that starts to get pain or movement, as well as damage to the labrum. And the reason why it's so important to identify if someone is suffering with hip impingement is if it's left, because sometimes can be asymptomatic, if it's left, it can start to cause pain and restriction and soreness and real kind of debilitating on day-to-day -day activities, as well as long-term, if we've got that poor congruency of the joint, it can lead to osteoarthritis, quite severe osteoarthritis and degenerative changes in the hip joint. So we need to know what's going on. So the most common symptoms are using the hip, so kind of going upstairs, so when we lift up through the legs, so pinching through, weight-bearing activity, anything where we're bringing the hip into a flexed or a rotated position, so any exercises bringing the hip up. What we normally find is they get stiffness and pain deep within the hip. What also happens with hip impingement, if there's involvement of the labrum, they can have something called C-sign around the side of the hip, so it can refer around and they can also get pain referral due to aggravation of the articular surfaces, of the cartilage, of the capsule, can refer down the front of the leg, down the back of the leg. So you can get quite um, sporadic symptoms with impingement as well. So quite random symptoms, but you normally find on testing, which is why I always, always recommend going and get it assessed, is when you bring the hip up and you normally internally rotate, although it can be affected on external rotation, but when you try to bring the hip up, there's that real bony end feel. There's a real blockage as we move and really kind of pinching and grinding as we open up and move through the hip. So it's most common in people that have had um, either a childhood issue with the hip, so hip dysplasia, slipped capital femoral epiphyses, so the slipping of the femoral head, so if there's any dysfunction of the femur as they're growing up, you know, any, any issues around the hip, any childhood sports that have involved repetitive compaction or um, movement through the hips, it might be gymnastics, basketball, you know, anything like that, hockey, anything where we're pinching through the hips can predispose. And so what they look at with regards to treatment is one, you want to get it assessed via imaging or so X-ray or MRI. So if I find someone coming in and it's very severe, particularly if they, you know, they're younger, or if it's affecting day to day, um, you may, you know, you may try conservative treatment first, but I think if it's flagged up on assessment, what we always do is send off for referral. So send them to a specialist, get it x-rayed, get it MRI for detail and see what's going on in the hip. Different interventions they look at is an arthroscopy, so short term to clear out into the hip. Most commonly they look at surgery to repair, so to re-repair the joint surfaces. Again, depending on the age and what's going on, will be different options. And that's why you always want to assess send on, send them to the specialist to have a look to see, send them to the orth orthopaedic specialist to see what's going on into the hip, get it assessed, get it treated. What we normally look at is the post-op stuff. So once they've had possibly surgery and had that initial, initial physiotherapy, so getting them to move, helping with scar tissue, helping with repair, what we would then look at post, post, post-op, so maybe 12 to 14 weeks, depending on pain levels and their level of mobility, is getting the hip moving. So releasing any tension around the hip, inducing traction and mobility, 
as well as mo mobilization and strengthening. So getting them to really strengthen and release, plus looking at how the body's compensated. So how we're looking into the lower back, any issues near your ankle, so around the hip joint, and getting that really nice movement and strengthening around the hip. So hopefully that's been helpful. Any questions, let me know. Please drop comments below. Obviously this month on YouTube, we are gonna be looking at prehab. So looking at what to do before we go into surgery, but today obviously covering hip impingement.